Hey everyone, it's Elle Nicole here, and I'm so, so sorry that I am just now doing my recap and review of episode three of Cloak and Dagger. I'm going to make it short and sweet, I promise. Make sure that you watch this one first, and then watch my review and recap of episode four that aired last night. All right, everyone, let's jump right on into it. Um, like I said, I'm going to make it very short and sweet. Um, I had some personal um, family things that went on last week. And so unfortunately, I was not able to film for episode three, which I wish I had because y'all, I watched it with my cousin and she just wasn't impressed. And I was like, girl, are you crazy? I, I thought episode three was the bomb and I would have loved to like film with her. But we just had so much going on. So again, let's make this very, very short and sweet. So far, episode three is my absolute favorite episode. Like, you guys, the metaphors and the imagery and everything that happened in episode three was just like, wig snatch, socks off, mind blown. <laughs> like, I don't have no edges anymore after episode three. I just thought it was really, really good. Um, you know, I love that we finally got a lot of like the New Orleans culture and really kind of was able to kind of take in that atmosphere with seeing a lot. Some of like I think it was like the downtown area. Um, and of course, just talking about like um, like the voodoo culture, I guess you can say um, we talked about like the difference between like voodooism as a religion and like as an like an added thing to your religion because they talked about um i guess you could say she was like the mother of voodoo and how she was also catholic and a lot of people like you know i believe everything that they were saying was like real information like if you went on a tour um down there so that's why i'm repeating it all back um i thought it was really really cool um just all the information that they were given and um and just kind of like really getting like that New Orleans flair. Um, I really, really love that. Um, Ty got himself a little boo now. I was like, okay, and she cute or whatever. She got a job, <laughs> you know, working hard and doing her thing. Um, but the episode picks up where after like Ty shoots into the car and Tandy, which I didn't really see at the end of episode two, I don't know how I missed it, but Tandy uses her daggers to block the bullet. And I don't know how I missed that, but I did. But you definitely see it at the beginning of episode three. So she gets out the car and they're like, did you shoot? Did you try to kill me? No, I wasn't. They go back and forth, whatever. And then she realizes who he is and he realizes who she is. And, you know, um, and she hits her head really, really hard against the steering wheel and she still proceeds to try to drive off. And he tries to stop her, but of course it's Tandy. She likes to run away and she doesn't listen. <laughs> so um, she keeps going. And so um, she definitely has a concussion for sure. And a sign of that is like the ringing that she was having in her head. And we know that because um, when Ty goes on the tour and he goes and meets uh, the auntie who I don't know if she's like a voodoo witch doctor. You know, I don't know if she's like the shadow man, but like the shadow woman. I don't know. I don't know what her role is exactly. Um, but when he goes to see her and she pulls out the tarot cards, she, you know, she's telling him like, you have to go into like your unconscious mind. And she was like, there's only two ways to do that. And it's either you can take this bath or I can knock you unconscious. And I'm, my assumption is that she said that because we know that Tandy has a concussion and she ends up kind of like passing out on the bus. That's what ends up happening. So she's on the bus trying to leave town. Um, and she ends up going into her unconscious mind and seeing um, Ty in her dreams or in her mind or whatever. Um, and just kind of like what he's been doing and dealing with from the time that his brother died. Um, as well as Ty ends up, he's like, oh, okay, yeah, well, you're not about to knock me out. <laughs> so they go down to like, I don't know, Publix, Whole Food, whatever. They get the list of things that they need, <laughs> put it in the bath water. And um, he goes into his unconscious mind where he sees Tandy and they're just kind of playing out what has happened or transpired since her father died and since his brother has died and how they pretty much just 
they're going insane with guilt because they keep doing the same thing over and over again thinking that they're going to get a different result which is he's being revengeful and he's trying to figure out how to kill this officer basically um and she just keeps running away and so um she tells him that he has to find another way and um she puts down a light dagger on the table which turns into handcuffs and and i guess that's her way of like you need to go by maybe like go by the book or um, just do it the right way. Like killing him is not gonna do anything but end up killing you, um, you know? So something like that. <laughs> and then um, with Tandy, he ends up stopping her with his black, it's, it's like black smoke, I don't, I don't know guys. Um, but he ends up stopping her and is like, you gotta stop running, you gotta figure out another way. So again, she takes her light dagger and like cuts into the glass of where her dad is and ro rocks on and like the scenes that they keep seeing or whatever but in a nutshell he's telling her she has to stop running um and so she does um she ends up meeting up with officer o'reilly who by this time has already been stopped by shady officer scarface i'm going to learn all the names guys i just really suck with names and to me the only important names is tandy and ty so whatever um <laughs> But um, Shady Scarface, in, you know, he somehow he's gotten involved with that rich boy and got him off because we know that he was going to attempt to sexually assault her. And Officer O'Reilly figures that out. And um, especially because when she goes to visit him, he tells her that he doesn't remember the guy. But his friends already told her that it was a girl and gave a description of Tandy. So she already knows that he's lying. So she seems like she's seeking to help her, which y'all know, I already feel like she's shady anyway. I don't really trust it, but in this instance, she does seem like she's trying to help Tandy. Um, so she leaves her car with Tandy's mom when she visits the house and um, Tandy ends up calling her. But by the time all of this happens, the case has already been closed and she has to break the news to Tandy. That's what happens pretty much on Tandy's side. And then with Ty, it was pretty much just having that that unconscious moment and learning more you know and kind of seeing what was going on with tandy and so they end up linking up at the church and it's like yo we need to talk and she's like yeah <laughs> and the episode pretty much ends so yeah again like i said short and sweet guys um and i kind of appreciated that about that episode because i didn't really feel like it, it needed to be like a drawn out situation um we already kind of saw their patterns in episode one and two but now they get to see each other's patterns and now they're going to kind of see how they can help each other i guess you can say um but overall i just thought it was a really good episode because of like the metaphors and the imagery um the cinematography like everything about the episode like the writing the like the dialogue like even though like ty at one point ty's not speaking but tandy is and then tandy's not speaking but ty is that's just powerful in itself so it was probably one of my favorite episodes but you all know that i am a tv dork and a writing dork <laughs> i love 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 great writing and i just really appreciated the episode i i really like where they're going with it with like the conversation and stuff because even like in the in like what we see in tandy's unconscious mind about ty like how everything he does is like the police were going to come after him you know what i'm saying like like it's almost like the law is not on your side like you, like that was so powerful to me and i was really <sighs> that episode was really powerful to me especially ty's like unconscious world no tandy's unconscious world of ty was just so powerful to me um i really i really enjoyed it like i just really enjoyed the episode and it was just really really good um i'm ex i'm excited to see what's going to happen in episode four especially when they meet up with each other and they finally talk to each other and i'm hoping that there's some type of explanation about episode three because I can interpret whatever in my own mind and so can you, but we do want them to kind of tell us that story too. Like what, where were you going with it at the same time? Um, but that was pretty much the entire episode was just them being in their unconscious world about each other and seeing, you know, things about each other. Um, I just thought Tandy's unconscious world about Ty was just deep. Like 
the, it's like then you see like the, like the check cash in place and he's like holding up the money and stuff and then like there was all those checks on the ground but and i don't know if anybody else noticed but his brother's name was like at the top of the check it i don't <laughs> It was just good <laughs> it was just a really good episode and like i said i want to make it short and sweet because my review of it is late and we're we're on to episode four at this point yes when you watch my review of episode four i'm gonna have on the same outfit because episode four comes on tonight so yeah <laughs> um anyways let me know your thoughts on episode three um how did it make you feel did you like it did you get it did you feel like they went too far did you feel like they were trying to be too deep um, let me know what you think about it. Leave me some comments below so we can talk about the show. Are you into Cloak and Dagger? Are you giving it up? Are you going to try to make it to the end? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either way, I know that you're watching and I love you for doing so. Until next time, guys, I love you for watching. Bye.